Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and I figured I'd throw as many Halloween episodes as I could at you. Um, so I have the Supernaturals review for comic fans, and then today we're going to talk about, or in this episode, because uh, it's the same day, we're going to talk about two movies that I saw recently that are horror movies that I really enjoyed. And I figured, you know, I had a lot of fun doing the Werewolf by Night and the What Have I Done movie reviews together, so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to try to keep out most spoilers but these movies have been out for a little while, so some of you have may have seen them, but some of you may not have. So I'm going to do my best with spoilers and stuff. So the first movie I'm going to talk about today is Nope, which is the new Jordan Peele movie or the recent Jordan Peele movie. And I'll be honest, when I saw the trailer, I was like, eh, it looks kind of interesting, but I, I wasn't really locked into it. Um, I'm a late bloomer to Jordan Peele films. Uh, you know, Get Out, everyone was raving about it, and I didn't see it until it came out to rent. And I was like, wow, this actually was a really good movie. So the, the only Jordan Peele movie I've seen in theaters is Us. And I think that is to date my favorite film of his. Uh, I really liked the concept. I really liked the doppelganger stuff. I really liked just how strange and weird it was, but like with some dark humor. And so as much as I like to get out, I actually liked Us a little bit more. And plus Winston Duke, who I'm just a huge fan of. And Peter Leongo, who's uh, who was also in that, both of them from Black Panther, and both of them who did a great job in that movie. And in this one, we have another uh, Black Panther actor from the first movie, Daniel Kaluuya, who I'm also a big fan of, and Steven Yeun, who I'm a, a big fan of as well, and Kiki Palmer, who I don't know too much of her work prior to this, but man, she is awesome in this movie. Um, but I, so I went in kind of being like, oh, I'm just gonna wait till it comes out to rent. It doesn't, you know, didn't really. The trailer didn't really like get my interest that much, and uh, and man, I kind of wish I did go see it in the theater. I wonder what the crowd would have been like, how, how they would have responded to this. Uh, so if you saw it in the theater, let me know. How, was your crowd, you know, interactive with it? Did they get excited? I saw some people say this movie was a slow burn, so that made me feel better about waiting for it. But I stayed away from spoilers, and I'm glad I did because this movie has a couple, but. It had the twists are neat, I should say, uh, but I really liked the characters like Daniel's character, OJ. Um, I really liked he was someone who worked in the entertainment industry in Hollywood. Um, his family goes they go back to like the very first stuntman, first actor and first, you know, animal trainer is all one guy. I guess there's like a two second piece of footage of a guy riding a horse and for a movie or a potential short film or something like a silent film. And it was his ancestor, like his great, great grandfather, uh, him and Kiki Palmer, who she plays his sister, um, Emerald. And uh, and they're they're fantastic. I actually really like them because he's very deadpan because he's I, I don't know, as you you don't really get a ton of insight on that character, but he witnesses something in the opening scene that shakes him. So if he was already kind of an apathetic, like oh, I don't really like this family business, I kind of got roped into it. If he was already that kind of guy, the thing that happens in the opening makes that way worse because uh, he loses a, a loved one and it's really like, you're like, what the hell? Like what, like what a freak nature thing of just randomly, it's this random event that happens and you're like, holy cow, like that's a strange event to happen, but also to, you know, to put on a, like, or to put Daniel's character, OJ, into a real crossroads scenario in his life. Um, because now after the passing of this loved one, he has no choice but to keep the business going. But he is not energetic. He is not passionate about the business. So he brings his sister in and his sister wants to be an actress. She wants to be a writer and a producer and a director. She wants to do all the things, you know, and uh, and she's got high energy and she can, you know, deliver, you know, the training, you know, like, hey, here's some safety tips on set with, you know, with dealing with our horses. So she's got all that energy. Um and so they kind of, you know, need each other in the wake of this passing of this loved one. And then meanwhile, the, the freak accident thing that happens in the beginning turns out comes back and reveals itself to be the major threat of the film in a way that you didn't expect. Actually, like I was like, oh, OK, they see this thing moving around. So they're kind of, you saw from the trailers like it's a UFO and it's like, oh, OK, that's that's interesting. So are we going to see little green men or aliens or whatever? And uh, they bring in other characters like Brandon Perez, uh, 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 his name's Angel, I think, yeah, in the film. Uh, he works at uh, one of the like electronic places. It's in Burbank, actually. I kind of remember it. I, mean, I used to drive past it all the time when I lived there. Um, but uh, like 
he he works there and he's like a tech guy so he's coming to help them install new cameras because the power keeps shutting everything down in their farm uh, because obviously they have security cameras everywhere so none of their horses the prize horses get taken away and then along the uh, along the way they meet Stephen Yun's character who is a former child actor who worked on a show that also had a tragedy happen and he has also been changed by this and feels like he was spared for a reason and that kind of sets him up to, in a way, aid the thing that's the threat. Uh, so that's like, there's, that's not really spoiling too much because I kind of guessed that pretty early on uh, based on his history. Uh, once you realize who he is and that he was the child actor on set at something that you see happen in the film. So you're like, oh, wow, that's him. That was him. Oh, that's got to change you big time um, having that happen to you as a kid. So it does. And, and so he runs like a rodeo show and uh, with horses and does like a whole stunt spectacular. But then he ends up, you know, kind of turning to go like, oh, well, maybe we can use this to our benefit for this new visitors, uh, you know, that we have. And uh, and then as the film progresses and you see what this thing actually is and how and just, man, they do some things in this where people are being digested and you're like, holy crap like that's so and you hear people screaming so every so that's how sometimes they find out this thing's around because you'll just hear like 20 people screaming and you'll see like change and keys and stuff falling from the sky and you're like god dang it's it's so messed up and such an interesting concept but it's very sci-fi and i was not expecting that from this movie it is horror but it's sci-fi horror and it gets pretty big and bombastic towards the end but I like the growth of Daniel's character, how he learns to really care and show emotion and use his brain. And so does Kiki. She kind of puts away all of her bull crap to kind of come into focus of what they need to do. And they come up with a plan and uh, and they try to take a fight, you know, their fight to this thing in, in a revenge kind of way because they lost a loved one. And now they know that something was responsible for it. So in the end, I actually really enjoyed this movie. Um, and like I said, I was going into it thinking I wouldn't that much. I'm glad I was wrong. And maybe going in with lower expectations helped me, but not that I think Jordan Peele's a bad filmmaker. Like I love Get Out. I love Us a lot. And and now I love Nope. Uh, so if you get a chance, go check it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. I would probably give it a four out of five. I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun and I, I, I can't recommend it enough. But I will say it's probably not for everyone. Uh, so, you know, and I guess I now I understand now that I've seen the film. I'm like, yeah, maybe I understand the criticisms and why people didn't like it. Maybe they're expecting something else. But I think because I didn't know what to expect, I ended up liking it a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, that's my recommendation for Nope. And the other horror film I watched, double feature, I had the other night, was this film called Barbarian. And I had heard people talk about this, but I knew nothing about it. And uh, what ended up happening was I saw an ad on Instagram that said, hey, check out the new Justin Long movie, which if you've seen the movie, you'll know why that's kind of funny. Um, he doesn't show up for like an hour <laughs> into the movie. Um, and he plays an integral part of this location where the movie's set and stuff. So I really like that twist. And I also like the the allegation part like his character had, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. And I'll try to keep spoilers a little bit down. Uh, but this one was was interesting actually. Like. I had heard people talking about it, and I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. It was, it was available to rent for like three bucks. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll check it out. You know, I'm watching Nope, and then now I'm going to watch this back to back, and I'll do a double feature for Halloween, you know, uh, share it with the, the parasites out there. So um, so this movie is like, I saw this ad that said, watch Justin Long's new movie, and it shows him go into a house, and he's like, hey, is someone here? Like, I, you know, I own this house. Why is someone here? And then he goes down to the basement, and then it shows some grotesque stuff, and that was like the ad I saw. And I was like, Oh, interesting. Okay, let's check this movie out. Well, the movie starts off completely different. It actually starts off with two different characters. Uh, Georgina Campbell, who plays Tess, and Bill Skarsgård. Um, and I think he plays Kevin. I think that was his name. Um, and they turned out they both rented the same B&B. Um, and it's really clever how they do it because it's raining, it's dark, and she can't really see. And she pulls up to this house and she goes in and uh, the key has like is behind a lockbox, but someone already took the key. So he's like, she's like, wait, how did someone take the key? I'm supposed to be here. And then she's like, oh, someone's squatting and something's going on. Someone break in. Um, well, it turns out Bill Skarsgård, who played it, <laughs> you know, answers the door. And he's like, oh, I look, here's my booking. And she's like, oh, here's my booking. And he's like, well, you know, come on in. Maybe we can figure it out. It's raining. You know, um, you can stay on the couch. I'll stay in the room and we'll call the people who rented us this Airbnb in the morning and we'll give them hell, get our refund or something. 
And she, you know, like any woman probably would be in that situation. And it's the guy who played it. <laughs> so the whole time I'm like nervous for her. I'm like, she's, he's got to be like, he, he's not on the level, you know, like there's something going on with him. And he's kind of weird and odd and he keeps offering her drinks like, hey, you know, I have this tea, you know, would you like me to make you some tea? And it's like, no, don't drink the tea. You know, he's probably drugged. And she's even like, I'm not drinking the tea. And you can tell there's a scene where she's get, you can tell she's getting thirsty because they're talking a lot. And she keeps looking over at the tea and you're like, oh, man, she's going to drink the tea. Don't drink the tea. Um, and then he offers her wine. He's like, hey, how about we have some wine? And so there's just this tension. And I'm like watching this. I'm like, I am so locked in because I am screaming. Don't do this. Don't do this. And the cool thing was she doesn't do any of the dumb things that you normally see people do in horror movies. She doesn't drink the tea. She doesn't drink the wine. Uh, if she grabs a glass of water, it's like in the bathroom when she's brushing her teeth and stuff. Like she, she's very clever. She'll like put things in front of doors and lock doors. And, you know, she, I'm like, She's playing it smart. This is amazing. And then the movie starts going in directions I just didn't see coming because they actually make it to daytime and you're like, wait, so nothing's going to happen between them? Like there's one of them's not a bad guy? Like what's going on? And then so that next day she goes to a job interview because she's moving to this area of Detroit, I guess. And, uh, and then the person who she had the job interview with is like, that neighborhood is bad. Like get out of that neighborhood. Nobody lives there. And so she's like, oh crap. And she goes back to the house thinking that, you know, Bill Skarsgård's character is going to be in trouble. And uh, and she gets back there, and that's where the rest of the movie really plays out. And I was like, wow, I'm so locked into this. that this It stressed me out. It had a little bit of the hills have eyes in it, and you'll know what that means when you see kind of the, the reveals of, like, what's going on, what's in the basement, uh, what's in the secret area of the basement, and what's in the secret, secret area that's beyond the secret area of the basement. Um, felt very Resident Evil to me. Um, and then that level, like video game, Resident Evil 1 remake, Resident Evil, not the terrible movies. Um, so Zach Kreger, who directed this, like, I, I got to give you credit, man. Like, this was well done. I actually really found this to be interesting and clever and locked me in. Now, it does kind of devolve towards the end. But what helps it is that the introduction of Justin Long's character, who is a, an actor in L.A., who has filmed a pilot with this woman, and the pilot's about to, you know, you know, go to series or whatever. And she makes an allegation that he um, sexually assaulted her. And so you see his life crumbling. You see his agents leaving him. Uh, his financial advisor is like, hey, I'm advising you go to Detroit, sell your property, get as much money as you can because you're going to have to pay for lawyers and all this stuff because she's going to take you to court. Um, Hollywood Reporter and, and Vanity Fair are already running articles about this. So no matter what public eye thinks you're you know, someone who does these things, whether you did them or not, and you kind of see him. But the, what, what was interesting is he never really denied it. I mean, he says, oh, it's absurd. It's absurd, you know, but he doesn't really say, no, I didn't do it. So I was kind of like paying attention to his body language. And Justin Long does such a good job because at one point he kind of convinced me that maybe, you know, he's on the level. And then as the movie goes on, there's other things with him that reveal like his his true character. And he's but there's also moments where he's like, no, you know what? I am a good person, though. Like, I, maybe I've made some mistakes, but I'm a good person. And you're like, oh, you're, and you like get back on his side. And then it just keeps going and going and peels, you know, onion peels. You have layers and layers and layers just keep coming off of all these characters um, and the stuff they're willing to do to survive this really intense situation that they get put in. Um, so, yeah, man. And then, like, the scene with the cops who don't believe uh, Tess and all this stuff, it's like there's some tense moments in this and i thought it was handled very very well and overall that's what made me enjoy this film and i would say also like nope i gotta give barbarian a four out of five i it got a little too gross for me i'm not a big fan of like hostile kind of you know brains getting smashed in kind of horror i'm not really into that too much but they use it very sparingly here and what i liked is that there wasn't really any cg with uh well, with the thing in the basement, <laughs> I won't go beyond saying beyond that. Um, it was all practical effects and uh, which rocked, rocked so much because it was so, so, so gross. I got really grossed out. Um, so, yeah, four out of five for both Nope and for Barbarian. Really fun movies. So if you're looking for something to watch this holiday, uh, Halloween, even though depending, you're probably watching this after Halloween. But add them to your Halloween list or just add them if you want to keep watching horror movies throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas, like I do sometimes, um, add these two to, uh, to your list and let me know what you think of them. If you have different opinions or same opinions about Nope 
or barbarian, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. All right, so hopefully I got you know these two videos out for Halloween. Hopefully that's enough content for you guys for Halloween. Um, maybe I'll try to squeeze in a Venom vlog Halloween one, but I don't know if I'll have enough time, but I'll do my best. If I don't, I'll be a day late with it. Hopefully you still enjoy it. So thanks so much. Leave your comments down below. We'll keep talking down there. See you in the future. Peace.